Welcome everybody. This is the eLearning Showcase uh, webinar for the 2016 Technology Conference, which will be held on April the 27th, 2016. I'm Debbie Richards. I'm the conference chairperson. And we're going to cover some basic information about the showcase. And then Steve Victor and Stephen Moreland will give you a tour of Obsidian Black. So hopefully we'll be able to answer any questions you have and get you started on the wonderful training modules that everybody's going to be developing. So first, um, I just want to, to do a over, quick overview of what we're doing. So um, we're going to be working on modules to help the Houston Food Bank. They um, have a need to develop annual e-learning compliance training, and they've, and they've got a little over 200 employees that need to take this training. So for the showcase, you're going to be creating an e-learning module, and we're going to give you a rapid development e-learning authoring tool called Obsidian Black to do that. Um, and then everybody is going to have a custom template that you'll be using that is branded for uh, the Houston Food Bank, and you'll also get some specific content. And the reason we're doing this, instead of letting you go off and develop the module and captivate or storyline or whatever you'd like, is we want to make sure that all the modules we create are consistent, and then that the food bank will be able to, to create courses that are, have a similar look and feel. And it also puts everybody on a, the same playing field and allows you to concentrate on developing really good instructional design content um, that will meet the training needs for the Houston Food Bank. We are going to judge those modules using a supply checklist, and that checklist is um, is out on the the website so that you can um, that you can take a look at that as well. Um, and then finally, what um, what we'll do is we will acknowledge everybody at the showcase, uh, 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 the showcase portion of the ATD Houston Technology Conference. So with your entry, you're also getting access to the full day of the conference. And it's going to be a great conference. I know you guys probably have gone out and looked at, at the site, but we're going to have um, uh, Tom Coleman as the keynote speaker. Um, we're going to have a couple of other good speakers. And then we're also going to have some um, some, some folks that are going to be speaking to us from a panel. So there's lots of really neat stuff to do. But you guys are going to be featured there as well. So as I said before, the tool that you're going to be using is Obsidian Black. And you'll be able to have that for free to use to develop. And again, we're going to have the, the uh, food bank template that we'll provide so that everybody has a consistent look and feel between the modules that are being created. You're going to be assigned a topic, and you'll provide, be provided content and access to the tool for the allocated time. And the topic will have the basic information, the resources that you can, um, that you can access as well. And then um, you'll also um, have access to uh, a subject matter expert that will answer questions for you and will give you the e-learning checklist so that you can check and make sure that, that you're meeting the requirements of, of minimum of what we're looking for. Um, and so, um, so hopefully that will answer some of the questions for you as well. So here are the topics. Bloodborne pathogens, hazardous communications, personal protection equipment, and ammonia safety. So after this webinar, you'll get an email from Harry, who is in charge of content for the showcase. And he will send you a document and anything else that you need to create that course. And Harry's going to be your go-to guy if you've got any questions or you need more information about the modules that you're creating. So we are going to have a panel of judges. And they are going to know who you are, and you're not going to know who they are until the technology conference. We'll meet everybody there. But after um, the, the day that we 
cut off access to the tool, they're going to review your modules using the checklist and they're going to be able to make comments and they may re review up to five different modules for the contest. Um, and then once they're done, um, they'll, they'll make some recommendations and we will have an overall winner of the showcase. Now, the modules that you create are going to be used by the food bank for their internal employee training, and they will be the property of the food bank. But we will get you a copy of your module so that you can have that for your portfolio as well. Um, and that will happen after the, um, the session is completed. So I got a question here from Albert about the e-learning checklist and who made that checklist. Well, this checklist was made up of from a, a committee um, here at ATD Houston, and it was approved by the Houston Food Bank. So it was a number of people that came together to, to, to put um, the guidance around what we thought you needed to include in your, uh, in your module. I hope that answers your question. All right. So here's the, here's the cool thing. So the showcase winner will receive a one-year license to Obsidian Black, and you're going to receive an eLearning Brothers developer package, which will come with ac access to eLearning templates, cut out people images, stock up images, video, and audio. Everybody's going to receive a gift bag with some goodies. We've got some things that that we're going to have for you that, that um, we've got folks that have been sending us some really neat prizes. Um, we've got some books and some other things. Of course, you'll receive a recognition award. We'll be taking pictures of everybody, and we will we'll acknowledge um, what you've done um, at the conference. But we're not going to let anybody know who you are till the day of the conference, because remember, we want to keep your identity secret from the judges, because we want them to judge you on your work and not, not who you are. So showing the modules. Um, we haven't made a, a final commitment, but we are talking about showcasing the modules at the conference and on the ATD Houston website. And I'll just be frank with you. Um, we want to see what your modules look like. Um, um, you know, this is, a, this is something new for us. We don't know um, how great the modules are going to be. I'm hoping that you guys are going to uh, put together some really outstanding work, but um, we are, are going to just wait to see what you produce. And then if, um, if you want, then we will um, uh, set up a place at the conference where you, where you can have folks look at what, the work you've done and then also put it out on our website and showcase what you've done. So we'll talk more about that in, as we get um, closer to the conference. Um, at the conference, we're all going to be in the same room, and there will be lots of space, so we'll have space if we, if we want to set that up where we can let people look at, um, at your work. So um, that's something that, like I said, we, we haven't quite decided that yet. All right. So who are the participants? Well, I'm going to tell you that there are two teams um, of people that are participating. And we have sent everybody access to Obsidian Black. Um, you should have gotten that before this webinar. And if you didn't get access, then we need for you to let us know so that we can make sure you have access to the tool. But uh, those of you that are on a team will need for you to tell us which account you want to use for your entry. We went, went ahead and gave all of your team members access to the tool so that you would have a chance to to play with the city in black, but you're only going to submit one entry for the showcase. And in all, we have 18 people who are participating, and I'm really happy about that because um, I think that's a, a really good number. It's a manageable number. This is the first time we've done this, so we're um, you know we're paving the way, um, and we didn't want to have too many people for the for the first time we do this, and we want to get your feedback. So um, as you go through the, the showcase and you work on your modules, let us know, you know what you think about the tool. Let us know what you think about this process. What can we do to make it better? You know, did it work for you? Um, were there some challenges? 
and just know that you know we are all volunteers and we're putting this together and we're hoping that that it's going to be wonderful and that um, we're going to have some really good um, pieces to show the, the Houston Food Bank. So here's the schedule. Um, after, like I said, after today, we're going to give you your content. You're going to have access to tools. And you will have until the close of business on April the 20th to complete your modules. Then from April the 21st to the 25th, you will have judging of those modules. And then finally, on April the 27th, we will announce the award and we will do recognition at the Houston Technology Conference. And just to let everybody know, on April the 20th, at close of business, we will lock your access to your modules. And we're doing this because we're switching at that point to judging, and the judges are going to be looking at your modules. They're also going to be making some comments um, and giving, the, uh, giving everybody some feedback. Um, we will, um, if you want, give you access to those comments. If it was me, I would want to know, you know some good feedback on the work that I've created. And, and we will have that for you so you'll know what they said, um, uh, constructive feedback on, on your work as well. So then um, the two people that you will have as your contacts, the first person for instructional design and content is going to be Harry. And um, I've got his email listed here. And I will be sending this out to you again uh, in an email. And of course, if you've got any issues or you need to, if you've got questions, you can always send an, you can always send an email to me. Um, and then um, uh, the other person is, um, and I've got the email wrong here, so let me just see if I can, I can fix it real quick um, on the screen, um, is going to be Stephen Victor with Obsidian Black, and he will answer any questions around Obsidian Black. So if you've got issues, you've got challenges, or you have questions about the tool, Obsidian Black, you'll go to Steve. If you've got any questions around content, you're going to go to Harry. Um, so um, before we start uh, into the demonstration. I'm going to see if anybody has questions, and I just see that um, um, Albert has just made a comment here, and he says, "Will there be someone to normalize the modules for the Houston Food Bank? I can imagine many widely different modules submitted, and will someone go into each module and iron out the bugs?" Yeah. So Albert, once we get finished with all the modules and the judging, before we turn everything over to the food bank, we will probably go through and look at those modules and, and see what needs to be done with them. When you see this demo, you will see that the tool that you're using is going to put some restrictions with a template to kind of keep everybody similar. Um, but uh, you know, we don't want to stifle your creativity, and we do realize that there may be some differences between the modules. but um, we're going to just see how it plays out. Um, and I think that's going to be part of the fun. Um, so does anybody have any questions about how the showcase is going to work, um, the process, or anything before we go to the demo of the tool? If you do, raise your hand or put a question in the question box for me. And I'll just wait a second to see if I've got any questions. I think I, the only one that I saw there was from Albert, um, and I think I've answered that question. Um, anybody else have a question? Okay, if not, I'm going to turn the uh, portion of the webinar over to, um, to Steve and let him demo product. And I'll just hang in the background. If anybody has questions or anything, I'll monitor those for Steve as well. So Steve, I'm going to make you the, um, the presenter. OK. OK. 
Uh, thanks very much, Debbie. Uh, welcome, everyone. We're so glad you could join us today. Uh, can everyone see my screen? I guess everyone's muted. I'll assume that you can. Um, just first, a, a bit about Obsidian. Um, we've been around since uh, about 1998, I think. Uh, we uh, develop custom uh, training and communication pieces for uh, Fortune 500 companies, primarily uh, in the Houston area, but, but elsewhere as well. Um, the, uh, the deliverables include web-based training, uh, mobile learning, uh, distributed learning pieces, uh, website uh, redesign, um, change management communications, um, just about anything. So I invite you to take a look at our uh, website, obsidianlearning.com, to find out more about us um, and uh, check out our blog as well. We've got uh, several interesting articles out there. Um, so turning to... Obsidian Black. Um, we started developing this tool probably, uh, I think, about a year and a half ago. Um, the reason was really um, uh, because of our frustration with the, the tools that are out there for developing um, um, HTML5 content. Um, that, that's a critical factor because um, HTML5 is truly um, a portable cross-platform tool, unlike Flash, which um, which isn't, and is also it's also sort of going away. Um, so we we uh, wanted something that was simple, uh, easy to use, um, and that um, generated uh, SCORM compliant, XAPI compliant uh, uh, courses that were um, fully H native HTML5. So. Um, I believe you've already gotten uh, your uh, account information. So um, to log in, what you would do is just go to obsidian.black, um, and then I'll show you how to sign, how to log in in just a moment. First, I just wanted to show you quickly a, a demo of, of what our tool can do, and then I'll sort of break it down for you as to how to, how uh, we went about creating this. Let's make a sandwich. First, choose your bread. You can consider some of the following types of breads. Sliced breads are the easiest. You can get this bread made so from we many can, uh, ingredients. Sync, Fry, potato, um, audio and wine, animations. Wheat, uh, we're the only cloud-based uh, um, mobile watching that tool that can do that. Yet. Um, add images. Small, round, or old. Next, choose your condiments. We have several um, condiments sort of canned interactions. Bread. This is an accordion, we call it, where you can really enter text and images. The um, I'll show you more about that in, in the actual demo. Finally, choose your fillings. Uh, you can insert uh, you videos. Can really get creative. Common fillings are. And, of course, we have um, assessment capabilities with um, several different types of questions that you can enter and um, SCORM reporting options as well. Uh, I hope everyone was able to hear the audio. I'm not, I'm not sure it's coming through for me. Um, so you've gotten your uh, account information. Go to obsidian.black, click the sign in button, enter the email and password that you uh, received a little while ago sign in and the first screen you'll see is the project dashboard this will um, of course contain all the, the uh, projects that you've worked on project is the term that we use to describe a course um, so I will walk you through um, creating a project so First, to create the project, you click Create New Project. Um, give it a title. We'll call it Let's Make a Sandwich. If you like, you can uh, share um, so, um, and allow comments, and uh, this allows other reviewers to, uh, to see your course, make comments, write feedback. Okay, so now let's go into the editor.
Okay, more icons will pop up as I add uh, content to the slide. The first thing you'll see when you create a new project are your um, page settings and a slide settings tool. Um, project settings, um, you can uh, set a, a description for your project, apply a theme to it, um, export it um, in SCORM, XAPI. Uh, you can set up sharing. Um, the theme is quite important for our purposes especially. Um, we have custom developed a, um, a theme for the, uh, the Houston Food Bank that, we, that we'd like all of you to use. Um, but I'll just quickly show you some of the defaults that we have. Our uh, team of uh, graphic designers has really put together some fun um, themes. Uh, at any rate, here is the Houston Food Bank thing. So, um, as you can see, it has um, the branding of the uh, Houston Food Bank. There are several custom um, section breaks. Uh, slides that you can use. Hey Steve, we're going to yeah. we're going to replace those um, section titles. Those are just uh, placeholders for right now, but right. we're going to have those replaced, correct? Right. We're going to with with more content uh, specific uh, related to the, the the topics. Yeah, we're we're planning to do that. I, I think you you sent some new uh, photos over. Yeah, yeah, I sent yeah. those over. Um, yeah. Hey, Steve, uh, can you can you hold for just a second? There's a sure. a comment a question that's out in the question box, and I just want to answer real quick. Um, Albert has um, has some questions about teams, and I just want to respond to that. So we are not dividing all the participants in teams. Um, there are two companies. That are participating in the in the showcase that are going to participate and and they're going to participate as a team. So it's going to be company A and company B, and then we're going to have a number of individual participants. So there there's just a few there's just a couple of people that are going to be teams. So you don't have to worry about having to work with some strangers on developing your module. If you are an individual developer, you're going to be able to develop the module yourself. But we've got two companies that are coming in um, into the showcase that are going to be developing modules. Does that make sense? Uh, well, it does to me. I hope it does to Albert. OK, great. Thanks very okay. much. All right, thank you. Uh, so, um, where was I? So we'll just let's say we'll just call this um, since we're making a sandwich. Uh, so I'm going to add another content slide this time. Um, we have different configurations: three column, a uh, fifty-fifty, uh, two column. Layout 60/40, an empty one that allows you to pretty much put whatever kind of content you'd like. I'm going to select this one, and um, to save time, I've got some. Uh, I've got some canned content that I've. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste. Um, you can copy um, and paste from um, Word, 
Uh, it retains uh, rich text uh, formatting, um, or you can type it in yourself. Um, and we have um, the, the typical expected sort of uh, text formatting tools. Um, you can um, apply HTML um, headings and styles. Um, you can uh, control the um, font color. You can set a, a, sort of a background color for a font, bold italic underscore, um, ordered and unordered lists, and then you can control the, um, the placement, the, the um, alignment of text. So I'm going to make these bullets. Um, you can either click the V the, for bold, or you can do control V, the usual uh, expected uh, keyboard shortcut. And now I'm going to show you how to insert an image. Over here in the insert uh, menu, we have a variety of things you can insert, an icon, um, a panel, which is something like this, that will let you um, highlight information by putting it into a, a color box. We have accordion, which I'll show you later. You can insert buttons um, that allow you to navigate to, to different pages or uh, within the course or to different to external websites. Um, but I'm going to show you right now how to insert an image. Um, to find the image you want, click Browse Server. And here you can select from images you've already um, uploaded. You can click Upload File uh, and uh, use your, uh, your operating system's navigation tool to find the file you want, or you can just drop file, drag and drop files onto the page, which I'm going to do here. So I want the bread JPEG. There, it's been added to the collection. And to insert it, I just click Insert. And I want to set it um, See if this shows properly. Yes, it's beautiful. So there's an image. Now, insert another slide. Click the insert slide button. Um, this time, just for variety, I'll choose a different layout. Steve, I've and got a couple of questions around text. Uh, uh -huh. Do you, can I ask you? So one of the of questions course. is: is can you change the font or where the text is located on a slide outside of what the template designates? Uh, to a certain extent, you can't change the font. You cannot. Um, you can apply. Um, make changes in this way. You can also um, do other things. Superscript, subscript, very tiny. Um, you can also, I'll undo that, Control-Z and does things. And you can set um, font color. But no, you can, uh, and of course you, uh, you can do the bullets and the bolding and that sort of thing. But right at this point we can't change um, uh, fonts. 
but we're at we're constantly working on black adding updates and one of the things that's on, on our roadmap is um, allowing users to uh, customize templates um, that would involve you know setting various CSS properties to uh, to, to have custom fonts colors uh, layouts that kind of thing um, well, and I I also think that um, controlling the font is going to help us keep some conformity between the different yes. teams. Exactly, exactly. That, that's we have one other right. question, um, is whether or not the tool has animation capabilities. Yes. It, um, it has a, we can animate um, objects, texts, and image, basically any, any object that we add. Is that, is that what this person was wondering? I, Well, I, I, I will, um, I'll, pardon. Yeah, I'm going to unmute, Antoinette, I'm going to unmute you so you, you can you can ask Stephen. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, Antoinette. Um, what I was um, envisioning the animation as far as uh, text being synced with, um, with audio, and in addition to the animation, like some type of um, interactivity as well. With uh, you can sync text um, with audio. Um, now, could you clarify the your, the second part of your question with interactions? Well, say for instance, um, I don't know if you want if you have like a drag and drop or something to that extent. Uh, as far as far as uh, interaction interactivity. Okay, I, I see. Uh, what you're doing. We have some canned interactions. Um, we're at this point. We have um, label graphics, um, uh, tabbed interactions, similar to what you see in Articulate Presenter. Um, we're working on drag and drop. Um, I'm not sure um, when that'll be out, but I know that it's in the works as we speak. Uh, we have a few different um, assessment uh, question um, interactions. Well. Uh, I have another question. Um, uh -huh. um, say, for instance, if if I wanted to incorporate um, some interactivity or um, animation, and I use like um, Adobe um, a, a Adobe product, can I um, put that in this course? You can insert um, uh, movies. You could, you couldn't insert Flash because you know Flash isn't wouldn't be compatible. You you could um, export uh, an Adobe uh, animation as um, I suppose it would be an MP4, would it? Um, and and in, import it that way. Okay. Uh, Stephen, uh, there's a there's another Antoinette. I'm going to mute you back again here. Okay. Um, there's another question, Stephen. Um, somebody asked if they can import outside HTML5 animations, like from Adobe Edge. Um, I've, could you, uh, would you mind unmuting Stephen Westmoreland so he could address that question? He's our uh, development guru and I, and I don't know um, Adobe Edge. He has to, he has to unmute himself. And uh, the other question was is, and I, I think I answered it, they wanted to know if they could upload images. Um, of their own, oh, yes. Um, yes. and and I said that was okay. Um, so and the, and Stephen, the other question is is um, um, does the tool have HTML5 capabilities to adjust for different screen resolutions? HTML5 has great capabilities to write pages that adapt well between desktop um, desktop monitors and tablets. It's well. We we the uh, the content that we output is responsive. We don't have a lot of the fine grained control of, of the uh, placement of responsive elements that you would see in something like Captivate yet. Um, but that's that's definitely in the works. Um, as you um, as you read, let me see if I can demonstrate this. It's preview. As you um, 
resize the uh, the 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 course interface resizes. So to that extent, it's responsive. But like I said, we don't have the real uh, uh, fine-tuned sort of responsive uh, options that you would have with something like Captivate. Did that answer the question? Um, I, we also have a response back from Steve Westmoreland. Um, okay. he, um, he, his mic is not working, so he said the most straight way, forward way to to bring in something would do to be um, to export it as a video from your tool and insert it into Black using Insert Video. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions before I move on? Um, all righty then. Let me insert another slide. I think we'll demonstrate this better. Uh, I was discussing uh, interactions, and now I'm going to insert an accordion interaction. Um, and we want to rename these. So the first one is going to be butter. The second is going to be Mayonnaise. And I'm going to add one that I'm going to call mustard. And you see that I uh, have this interaction. Um, and you can insert images. And in this one, I think I will insert a picture of butter, just so it's clear what we're talking about to everyone. Um, you can also uh, type text. So, so this accordion is really just an alternative way of presenting information. Um, could use it for uh, discovery type learning, um, and uh, just a variety from from having uh, bullets on the screen. And I'm going to um, address um, Antoinette's question now about um, syncing audio. I'm going to show you how we do that. It's it's very cool. And as I mentioned earlier, um, no other uh, cloud-based um, HTML5 authoring tool currently offers um, audio syncing. It's important just to note that it's cloud-based because there are, of course, tools that do that that aren't, that are, aren't cloud-based. So, so, I've got this text here and let's say I want them to be bullets. And I want to add some audio. So I go here to the slide audio icon, browse my server, and the audio file I want is this one. So we've got the audio. Now we need to apply some sort of animation to the bullets. Um, to do that, click the insert animation icon. There's a variety of things to choose from. Um, fade in, fade in down, fade in left. Um, there's some more dramatic ones sliding in or up. Um, I think what I'll do is just stick to the standard fade in. Uh, 
Okay, now I want to sync this, um, these bullets with the audio. To do that, I just click the sync animation button and then I get a slide that shows every element on this page that has um, an animation applied to it. I can use the up down arrows to reorder them if I like. Um, these are how I want them. So I click sync. Now I click start sync and I hope the audio is going to be audible to you guys. Next choose your condiments. Condiments help to make the bread more moist. They aren't required, but they can really add flavor and texture of the food. Sorry, I didn't. I wasn't quick enough. So, next, choose your condiments. Condiments help to make the bread more moist. They aren't required, but they can really add flavor and texture of the food. Now, I don't. I don't that might have been too subtle for you to see over the. Uh, um, um, go to meeting, but I clicked the button here um, in time with the audio. So let's just preview. Next, choose your condiments. Condiments help to make the bread more moist. They aren't required, but they can really add flavor and texture of the food. Hmm. You might have to tweak the timing a bit. That didn't. Um, work as expected. Next, choose your condiments. Condiments help to make the bread more moist. I'm wondering if it's they a latency required, issue. But they can really add flavor and texture of the food. Well, at any rate, we'll uh, we'll uh, get back to you on that. That that's how you uh, sync audio. Um, it should be better synced than that. Um, I'll look into that after this presentation. The final thing I want to show you is how to insert the video. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. First you go to insert video. If you um, have um, an existing file, you can use the uh, resource manager to upload it, or you can enter a URL. Uh, such as uh, for YouTube, um, Vimeo, uh, and the video will appear um, properly formatted. I've got one here that I'm just going to copy and paste. And there we have our video. For those who don't know, this, this is helpful in learning how to slice a sandwich. Okay. The final thing I want to show you is how to insert assessment questions. So first, I think I will do a multiple choice question. And you enter your question in the question field, and, and in this area, you enter the responses. Obviously, 
whichever uh, you can use this for, mul for uh, multiple uh, selections. If there's more than one, you just click the one that's the, the answer or answers that are correct. So now you see that. Oops, just the wrong answer. Forgot to tell you in order to demonstrate that you can alter the feedback that appears. So so this time I'll select the correct response. That's right. How are we doing for time, Debbie? I think we're doing okay. Um, I do have a couple of, of questions that people okay. have asked, but I was holding off until you were at a place in your demo where we could ask these questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm just about, uh, I think I'm just about done, so yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we've got a question about moving text boxes around on a slide. And Steve answered the question. I just want to let everybody know. Um, and this um, Obsidian Black is a tool that's developed by a Houston company, and it's a um, it's a new product. So they're they're working on, as Steve has been saying, they're working on additional capabilities. So at this time, you've got to put content into the region specified by the template. So they're working on some other template capabilities that will allow you for further customization of the layout. And if they're, for some reason, whatever you're trying to do doesn't, if it's something that you just feel like you ha absolutely have to do and it's not you know, letting you do what you want, contact Steve Victor and, and they will see what they can do to help you with that. Um, the other question is creating our, your own interactions. For example, making use of buttons, and Steve Westmoreland said, the tool offers the ability to insert buttons with customizable actions. So you can use those to build branching scenarios and other types of custom functionality. Um, yes. And then another question um, that was asked that, um, that uh, was around 508 compliance, and Steve Westmoreland replied that the content uses the area, alt tags, and other attributes that are defined in HTML for 508 compliance. Um, and just to let you guys know, I will um, I will post these questions and answers so that you'll have access to those. Um, what I'm going to do is try to get everything out there on that page out on the um, the ATD website that has of the information about the contest so that you can go out there and use that as your page for information as well. Um, so Steve, this is a question to you. Um, someone asked if you can add graphics to the knowledge check or assessment question. Now Steve Westmoreland said one way would be to use the 50-50 or 60-40 layout with a question inserted on the left and an image inserted on the right. Um, but that was a, a question that we just had. That, that Stephen's uh, response is, is the best one. You can, within the uh, interaction itself, no, you can't put uh, an image in the question. But uh, if it, as Stephen suggested, we did something like this, we could then Insert our question. So there's your question, and over here will be. I don't know if I even need to go to this. I'm obviously going to add the picture of the bread. Somewhere. 
So that's the, that's the way to accomplish having um, an image uh, appear with a question. Great. And, and just to let everybody know, um, Obsidian really would like for you guys to, to test, to reach the different parts of the tool and try different things and, and give them feedback. So, um, you know, do what you want and, and give them as much feedback as you can. Um, so there's another question. Um, I see a button on the right that looks like it gives me access to the raw HTML. Yes. Could a programmer insert their own HTML, JavaScript, what have you code into the page? Um, Stephen can answer that better than I can. Uh, you can to you can edit the the um, the code that is appears within this slide. So let me try to do that. What do I, what do I have on the slide? So Stephen said. You can edit that, but certain JavaScript may not be permitted for security reasons. Okay. Is, is, is that a good enough answer for the person who asked that? Must be. I, I just wanted to circle back um, and show you the uh, the synced audio that I did. Um, Stephen pointed out to me that what I I didn't complete the uh, the creation of the the syncing by by clicking the doing a final button click. So now I hope this should work correctly. Next, choose your now, condiments. Yes, there we go. Condiments help to make the bread more moist. They aren't required, but they can really add flavor and texture of the food. So that looks a lot better than it did before. Um, do we have any other? <laughs> do we have any other questions or comments? Um, as Debbie mentioned, we are. We this is um, very much a work in progress. We just released it um, this past. Uh, I think it was September at, at uh, DevLearn. Um, we're constantly making improvements, um, and we're adding new features, and, and uh, we're, we're open to any kind of suggestions or comments that you might have as you're uh, using the tool uh, throughout uh, the competition. So um, any other questions, comments? Uh, apparently not, uh, Debbie. I, that, that's um, really all I, I wanted. I just wanted to give a high-level overview. Um, let me direct everyone to um, the uh, our help site, help.obsidian.black. There's um, uh, procedures on how to do things. Um, it, once you're logged in, you'll be able to um, access um, forums. We have online forums for discussion, for asking questions, that sort of thing. Um, so I think that the combination of this help site and any addressing any questions to me, I think that you'll be able to do just fine with, with Black. It's really quite a simple tool to use. Okay, so, great. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'm going to take that control here. Okay. Um, if I can, um, or you can make me the presenter. Uh, let me figure out how to do that. Yes. Great. So, um, so I hope this overview was 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 good for everybody, and you were able to just see the basic features of of Obsidian Black. Um, go through the the help system. Um, if you don't have access to the system, make sure that you let um, Steve know so that, that uh, he can get you access to it. And again, I want to just mention this thing about teams. We are not putting everybody into teams. You are going to be participating 
as individuals for the most part. We just have two companies that have signed on to enter the showcase um, that are going to be participating as a team. There's in one company there's two individuals and in the other company there's three individuals. So when they're done with their piece, they're just going to be entering one um, one module. So they're there's that's how they're going to they're going to submit it. But everybody else, you're going to be working by yourself developing the course. Um, again, if you have any questions about anything, um, you'll be contacting Harry on the ID content side, and you'll be talking to Steve on the Obsidian Black side. Um, you should have received your access to the tool, and you will be receiving your content from Harry either late today or tomorrow. It will be in the form of a Word document. It will have the, um, the information about which module you will de be developing. We will list the key areas that, that you'll need to cover in the training. Um, we will give you access to resources that you can use to develop the training. We will give you access to some um, graphic elements that you can use, but you can also bring in your own graphics if you want to. Um, and then we will um, we'll also give you a list of sample questions that you can use in your um, in your module that you're developing as well. These modules are not going to be huge modules. When you look at the content, you'll see what I'm talking about. But if you have any questions, once you get everything, please reach out to Steve, Harry, or me so that we can help you. Um, we hope that you start working right away um, so that we can help you along the way and answer your questions at any time. Contact us. Um, and we will be checking in with you over the course of the next month to make sure everything is going OK. Um, again, I want to thank everybody for, for doing this. I think you know, it's a great value to the community that you're doing this. And it's going to mean a lot to the food bank. When we are there together at the conference, um, we are going to let everybody know um, how your contribution really helped the food bank. And the conversation that I had with those folks when we were starting this, um, this project is that everything that we do means that they can use the money they would spend on, on doing this themselves. They can take that money and they can use it to feed people. So um, at the end of the day at the conference, we're going to tell you guys how many people we were able to feed by developing these modules by the fact that Obsidian is donating a copy of the software um, to um, the food bank and our combined, com uh, our combined effort. So as a last uh, comment, what I would say is, is if you would keep track of the amount of time you spend developing the modules, um, it'd be great for us to get that feedback. Um, and it will also help us when we're talking about counting up the, the amount of time and the effort that, that we, as members of this showcase, are putting in to develop this for the, for the food bank. And we can see the, the real impact that we're making. So again, I want to just thank everybody. Um, uh, if you've got questions, uh, make sure you reach out to us. I will be sending you some additional information uh, as well. Um, and um, and communicating with that, um, and uh, so um, and and I've got one more comment, um, and this comment is um, uh, we're going to have 18 participants doing all they can on the modules. So um, they you uh, this comment is we may break the module by doing something exotic. Um, but City and Black will not have time to fix it, even if they want to. So I think we should share things um, that won't work on Obsidian Black. So we will do that. We will share those things with you. And again, um, you're not going to be working on all four modules. You're going to be assigned a module. 
Um, and it will be things that, that, that you will be able to complete in the time allotted. And again, um, give us your feedback. Let us know what you think. Um, we want to do this again. We're actually starting, uh, ATD Houston is starting an e-learning SIG. And this is something that we would like to continue to do. So you guys are our pilot group, and we really want to get feedback from you. So does anybody have any other comments or questions before I close out the, the webinar? I will unmute you if you will raise your hand. Or you can put a question in the question box. So there's a question about how long the training should be. Um, we would like the training to be less than 30 minutes. Um, so it can, you know, you're going to look at the content and you can make that determination. But again, um, you know, if you've got any questions, once you start working on it, just reach out to Harry or to me around content and reach out to, to Stephen um, around Obsidian Black. Any other questions? If you want to talk, just let me know. Um, raise your hand and I will let you talk. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for attending our webinar today. We, um, like I said, we are recording it, so you can go back and listen to it again. We will put some of your, your questions and information out um, where everybody can see it. You will have, we'll get you your content, we'll get you the handouts and all the information, and I really look forward to seeing what you create. So um, have fun with it. Um, and I look forward to also seeing everybody at the conference on the 27th of April. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>